she interrupts a man in the middle of a meeting. Since he sees that the charming woman is no longer interested in the meeting, he follows her into the next room and starts to improvise. After a tragedy caused by a conspiracy, Massimo came to pay his respects at the grave of his brother Adriano. Massimo negotiated with Nacho for them to disappear from his territory within an hour. He forbade Nacho and his father to set foot in Sicily again or they would be killed. This was Massimo's last act of mercy. Then he gets a call and rushes home. We saw Laura once again, who had escaped death. Laura is still recovering from her gunshot wound. So Massimo put an end to the game for Laura's health. As soon as Laura was able to get out of bed and walk, she went downstairs to meet her best friend Olga. She immediately asked for a bottle of wine and drank with her, not caring about her gunshot wound. After catching up, Olga took Laura shopping. Laura celebrates her rebirth after a long illness. After all, Laura had been cooped up at home for a long time. The two of them were having a wonderful time. Suddenly Laura received a phone call from Nacho. Nacho asks her how she is doing and says he can't get her out of his mind. Laura asks him to try and prove it to her. She's married to Massimo, but Nacho has been there for her during her worst moments. Perhaps Laura and Nacho's relationship went beyond the definition of good friends. There was no intercourse, but it was clear that Laura was in love with Nacho. But she's holding back, saying she wants to get over Nacho. Then Laura and Olga moved on to a nightclub. Shortly thereafter, Olga's fiancé, Domenico, arrived. So Laura was ready to take a stroll. Suddenly she saw Nacho as she was about to focus on the man. Her husband Massimo appeared in front of her. Laura thought she was hallucinating. Massimo then took Laura to a private room for a meeting. When Laura woke up again, she was back home. But Massimo was nowhere to be found. Massimo was sitting alone in the living room drinking wine. He is suspicious of Laura and suspects that he is being cuckolded. He asked Laura what had happened during her elopement with Nacho. He accuses her of not telling him about the pregnancy. Laura explains that she had nothing to do with Nacho. She hid the pregnancy to protect the family. All this happened because Massimo made enemies. She doesn't want Massimo to start a war. Massimo was drunk and didn't believe Laura's explanations, then broke the glass in anger. Laura sees this and remembers the good times she had with Nacho. Massimo vents his feelings and leaves her alone. Crying, late at night, Massimo puts Laura to bed after she falls asleep. He stayed up all night. Instead of having sex with her husband, she dreamed of being intimate with Nacho. However, when she woke up, she saw her husband. The subtle changes in her senses made Massimo realize that his wife was hiding something from him. There's a rift in their relationship, and they're no longer as close as they used to be. Laura's marriage is in crisis. She turned her attention to her business. She went to work as a producer and designer for her own fashion company. Her busy schedule took her mind off things. On the other hand, Massimo was always busy with his business, like business meetings with his partners. Massimo has always maintained a strict code of conduct that he doesn't have intimate relationships with other women. Now Laura and Massimo are busy with their own business. The two who knew each other best seemed like strangers. That day Laura received an invitation to Lagos Fashion Week in Portugal. She was excited to go to Lagos Fashion Week with Olga. Massimo had arranged for his strongest bodyguard to ensure Laura's safety. The two of them arrived in Portugal and spent their time on the beach, watching surfing competitions and ogling handsome men. When Laura heard on the radio that Nacho had won the surfing championship, she was surprised to see Nacho, whom she hadn't seen for a long time. Laura doesn't want to be seen, so she takes Olga and leaves the scene in a hurry. The two of them, traveling on official business, couldn't miss their vacation. Laura and Olga traveled through the alleys, bars and nightclubs, getting drunk to the bone. That day Laura dreamt of Nacho again, Laura wakes up and feels that Nacho was just beside her, but it seems that it was just a dream. After the hangover, Laura looked confused. The fashion show started as scheduled. Laura exchanges ideas with the fashionistas. Olga was drinking alone. It wasn't long before Olga was drunk and forced to be taken away by the bodyguard, but Olga wasn't going to give in. This is a breakneck eagle stresses chickling game. Staying at the fashion show, Laura met Nacho's sister, Elena. They got to talking and Nacho came up. Elena says that although Nacho cheated on Laura and hurt her deeply, but Nacho isn't a bad person because it's all in the family and Nacho has no choice. Nacho has learned it a hard lesson after the last tragedy. She wants Laura to give Nacho another chance to talk to him. Nacho has been waiting for Laura for a long time and has been watching Laura silently. Thanks to Olga taking the bodyguard away, Nacho was able to ask Laura out. The two of them finally meet again at this moment after a long time apart. Laura blames him for hurting her, for lying to her, for using her. Nacho's presence has disrupted her life, but when Nacho stood in front of her, Laura couldn't hide her longing for him and kiss him. Nacho didn't say anything, but I think I'm in love with you. Then Nacho didn't take her back to the hotel. He took her to his villa. Nacho promised to make amends for all his mistakes. She came to Nacho's elaborate picnic on the beach to catch up. 
Nacho said that you should not suppress your feelings. Laura needed time to think about it. Then she tried to leave, but Nacho took her in his arms. They couldn't hold back their feelings any longer and finally had an intimate encounter that elevated their relationship. The next day, Nacho took Laura back to the hotel and said he would give her time to think about it. He would wait as long as it took. He wouldn't force Laura to do anything. He just wanted Laura to choose to be with him. After saying a brief goodbye to him, Laura went back to the hotel and bumped into Massimo, who had been waiting for her. Massimo asks Laura where she was last night and who she was with. Laura claims she just went for a walk last night, but Massimo doesn't believe her and calls her a liar. Laura didn't answer Massimo's questions and went straight upstairs. Massimo followed her immediately. Laura confronted Massimo with questions and explained that she had tried to save the relationship, but it hadn't worked. When she was hurt over and over again, all she got in return was Massimo's suspicion and distrust. The thought of divorce had already crossed her mind. She was at a loss as to how far they could go together. She began to run away from Massimo and asked him to go back to Sicily and leave her here alone. Without spying on her, she needed to be alone and to follow her heart. In Laura's mind, a balance had been struck. She has to think about her future. Massimo calmed down and went back to Sicily. Laura was left alone in the empty room. She looked at the note left by Massimo and cried. Laura always thought that Massimo only cared about his family and his career and never cared about her feelings. All she wanted from Massimo was more understanding and companionship. But that became a luxury. When you fall in love with two men at the same time, how will you choose? Love is not a commodity. The real thing cannot be bought, sold, traded or stolen. Laura returns to her parents and tells them what she's been going through. She is in love with Nacho but she doesn't know what to do. Massimo's love for her is domineering and possessive. Nacho's love for her is a caring and considerate one. Laura's mother says a woman should put her own happiness first. A woman treasures the happiness that she has worked so hard for. A woman who lives only for a man will never be satisfied. After hearing her mother's words, Laura seemed to have an answer. Laura went out with her father on his motorcycle. Her father took Laura along the familiar streets to reminisce about the good old days of her childhood. In the presence of her father, she can be her true self without any restriction. While eating dinner with her father, Laura received a call from her friend Olga. Olga said that Massimo knew everything about Laura and Nacho. Massimo is furious at home when he realizes he's been cheated on by his wife. He would never allow his wife to be infidel. Olga is terrified and doesn't know what to do. Laura, however, is very calm and decides to go back to Sicily to tell Massimo everything. Keeping it a secret is not a solution. There must be a solution. Laura got off the plane and got into a taxi. But the driver was Nacho. Nacho was willing to lose his life to get closer to Massimo's turf in order to win Laura's love one last time. He loved Laura's personality, her stubbornness. He was willing to watch Laura quietly. Nacho loved everything about Laura and wanted to have everything about Laura. He wants to take Laura to every corner of the world. So, he can't live without Laura. Laura said she needed time to talk to Massimo. Nacho was willing to wait as long as it took for her to make her choice. In a flash, Laura right home. Olga rushed up and hugged Laura. The moment Olga saw Nacho, she reminded her what Massimo did for a living. Nacho only said happy birthday to Laura before he left. It's Laura's birthday, but maybe it's a tough day for her. Laura could have just left with Nacho, but he didn't want to force Laura. Laura also wanted to give Massimo a piece of her mind. Laura went to the beach to find Massimo with great trepidation. He was unusually calm, more than Laura and Olga expected. Massimo insisted that he had to talk first, and if he didn't talk now, he might not get another chance. During the time that Laura was not with him, Massimo finally realized what he wanted. It was as if everything had changed since they lost their child. He blamed himself for leaving Laura alone. He knew about Laura and Nacho, but he didn't want to be a terrible husband, so he wanted Laura to make the choice. Massimo told her a parable his father used to tell him. If you really love something, just let it go. If it comes back, it's yours forever. That if it doesn't, it was never meant to be. Massimo turned to her and asked, are you back, baby girl? She looked at Massimo in deep thought. I can tell he only has eyes for you. How could you abandon him? Let's explore the wonderful movies together. You can subscribe to Maroon Recap and leave comments.